Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. Dave and Herb are on board to bring you 2019, where there's plenty of good stuff already happening, like this incredible new facility we're shooting at called the Live House. It's part of the Musicians Institute, and it is an absolute dream entertainment complex right in the heart of Hollywood, 15,000 square feet of live entertainment space, 120,000 watts of audio, really fine-tuned to perfection. There's green rooms, it's state-of-the-art broadcasting. Um, we're sitting on the stage right now, and again, it, it is really incredible. If you're going to book a live space for any of your live events, your conferences, whatever the case may be, consider the live house, you will not be disappointed. So as you can see, it's a pretty incredible facility. Um, we're honored to be asked to test drive it. All the stuff you saw in the video, it, it's enhanced by a thousand when you're actually here. And a, a real tip of the cap to the Musicians Institute team, uh, Mr. Shibuya, Jonathan Newkirk, mm -hmm. who's been incredible, mm -hmm. uh, Crystal Schaefer, Charles Chimery, the whole group. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So um, we're happy to uh, be giving this thing a shot. <sighs> Correct? More than happy. I'm excited. Pretty cool. Next up, set your calendars. NAM 2019 is coming right up. It's January 24th through 27th, and if you can go, you should go. We would love to see you. Um, here's our schedule, briefly. All three days at noon, we'll be at the Avid booth, like we usually are. We'll be broadcasting live, get there early to get a seat. That's booth 15502, I'd say get there about 1130. Uh, our guest on Thursday will be Leslie Braithwaite, who's killing it with Cardi B and Pharrell fame and so on and so forth. Friday, the always brilliant Greg Wells, he's got some new news. And then Saturday, multiple Grammy nominee and CEO of Super Hot 1500 Nothing, Rance Dobson. Rance is up for record of the year, R&B record of the year. He did something with Chris Stapleton and Justin Timberlake and produced a Nipsey Hustle record on fire. Uh, and he happened to open up a school. He and his partner, James Fauntleroy, he'll be there to talk about that. Our afternoon schedule is Thursday evening at the Pioneer Outdoor Stage. <coughs> we're going to grab EDM master mixer Luca Pridlisi. Luca. And we're going to play you some of the stuff and show you some of the tips and tricks he's used with people like Diplo and Steve Aoki. His current Grammy-nominated smash, Mia Gente with Jay Balvin and Willie Williams. Hot as fire. Uh, goodbye with Jason Drulo and David Guetta. And a whole lot more. So what we're going to do outdoors is jam a little and learn a lot and have him explain to you how you can take those tips and techniques and then put them in your mixes. Doesn't matter what genre of music you are, you'll learn something. Then Friday evening, we'll be in the Pacific Ballroom. That's in the Hilton, uh, starting at five o'clock. We'll have a very special guest that we will announce next week. And it wouldn't be Pensado's Place, it wouldn't be 2019 if we didn't have some goodies. So, we partnered with NAM to bring you a great deal. $25 entry fees for your NAM badges. All you have to do is register um, at www.nam.org forward slash the NAM show. You see the link right here. Click register attend and enter the code NAM jam before you fill out all of your info. The code's NAM jam. So enter it again, www.nam.org forward slash the NAM show. And that's the benefit of us. And then our boys at Warm Audio, Royce and, and Bryce, all those guys, we love those guys. Mm -hmm. um, they're launching some new mics. They want to give some away to you. So if you go by their booth, 15716, scan your badge. They've got two mics. There's going to be four winners, two of their WA-251s, mm -hmm. and then two of their WA-84s. One's a two mic. The other is a small diaphragm mic, really incredible. You know their gear. Mm -hmm. Get over there, scan your badge, and then when we come back, our first show after NAM, they'll tell us some winners and we'll get them to you. Uh, so, NAM coming, Live House Incredible, and if you would, sign up for our newsletter, like, subscribe, and notify right here, and we thank you. And DP, what's our ITF? Uh, sometimes, Herb, I like to enhance the performance of a vocal or a particular part, and I do that with reverb um, and expanders. Check it out.
I like a lot of dynamics in my vocals, and I'm always trying to find ways to enhance that dynamic, but yet keep the vocal in your face. Now, the classic solution for keeping a vocal in your face is to use some compression and some light limiting, uh, and that's what I've done on this track here. Um, let me play it for you, and, and, and you'll see it sounds, it sounds really good. Honey, you my sweet, sweet baby dear, when I'm now we've got a lot of lot of great dynamics and the and the, 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 the performance is enhanced by these dynamics. Now I've, as you can see I tamed them a little bit because because that's what we do you know we, we want the vocal in your face and so uh, sometimes that bothers me and so what I've done is um, I've made a copy of this track. you see it's, 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 it's an exact copy. What I've done is, is I've sent the output of this to some effects. I've got a de-esser, and then I've got a delay. I'm, I'm using a quarter note delay here, and then this delay is optional. And then I'm going to uh, this, this really cool uh, mangle verb. Because we're, we're trying to create a, um, the feeling of, of enhanced dynamics here. So let's check it out. Here's, here's here, here's without it. I don't want to cause you harm me. You my sweet, sweet baby dear. And here's with it. I got a little louder than I normally would just so you can hear it. I don't want to cause you harm me. You my sweet, sweet baby dear. Let's kick it up a little bit more. I don't want to cause you harm me. You my sweet, sweet baby dear. You hear the difference in the dynamics? I'll play it one more time without it. I don't want to cause you harm me. Okay. Try this. Cause you harm me. Cause you. Can you hear the difference in the, in the, and not only does it get louder when he gets louder, but it also has a, an effect on it. Now, now I showed you the, this effect. Um, the, the, the way to make this work is to put our compressor, everybody's got a copy of it. It's one of the, one of the great, you know, desert island compressors out there. Uh, now, very seldom do people take the ratio and go up. Down, you get compression. Up, you get expansion. Watch. Cause you harm me. 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 Cause it's pretty cool, huh? And then you can use all the effect, you know, different effects that you want to use, but. Um, um, when you listen to the whole song, you've been suspicious lately, but you can keep your eyes on me. That's just beautiful. You, I don't want to cause you harm me. You my sweet, sweet baby dear. When I'm now you could use this on guitars. You could use it on 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 anything you want, and then over here. You can do different things. You might replace all of these with, say, um, decapitator or, or something like that, or you might you might replace it with uh, just a reverb or anything you want, and it'll parallel whenever whenever this guy goes up loud. It'll 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 kick in and it'll enhance the performance uh, of, of what you're you're working with. Anyway, I uh, hope you like that one. I, I had a lot of fun doing it, and we'll see you next time. So guys, we decided we'd do a Ask David Herb show. Um, we went to socials and got a bunch of questions from you. It seems to me that there's a lot of information that people would like to have. So we're just gonna fire back and forth and see if we can get you some answers to kick off your new year. So let's start with an easy one for you, Dave. Okay. Um, this is from NV the Engineer. We got this off IG. Uh -huh. um, and I love his terminology. It's, he's, he's a rootsy kind of guy. Uh -huh. And he says, how does someone that's a 31-year-old grown-ass man <laughs> that's been out of engineering school for 12 years go about getting an internship? 
My, I, I was a little older when I got here, and, and I made it about my maturity, my trust level, um, the fact that I had some experience uh, uh, in other businesses. And, and what a, what a, if you deconstruct the problem, uh, most studios are looking for someone they can trust with millions of dollars worth of gear. All studios have the same gear, so uh, basically it becomes a, a contest between lounges and staff. And so that engineer is going to represent millions of dollars for that studio. And if, the, if that assistant is bad, people won't come back to that studio. So, so, so use your 31 years, which is not that old, uh, as an asset. And, and I, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll succeed sometimes before the younger guys. Can I give a perspective? Of course. Um, I would say don't try. Depends on where you live. There is a million places now where there's audio opportunities. And if internship is your goal because you want to be at a commercial studio, then you have to analyze that differently. Mm -hmm. You have to be in a city that has commercial studios, has to be relatively thriving on the music scene, so they're busy, so they're hiring. If you don't have that there, maybe you take 12 years of engineering school experience and apply it in some other audio form and get a job that pays. So know that you have both options. I'm not frowning on one or the other. I'm saying think no, that's good wide, advice. don't, that's good don't advice. think singular. All right, your turn. I got a good one for you, Herb. This is from DC Music on Instagram. He wants to know the importance of, of live contact, like going to events, going to parties, as opposed to social media. What's your take on that? Um, I think you have to develop both skills equally, and I think there's been much more emphasis in the last, you know, 10, 15 years mm -hmm. on your social media skills. Mm -hmm. um, they're important. Um, I think their importance is a little bit out of perspective, meaning that they become so predominant in the way you live that you don't necessarily keep developing your personal skills. Mm -hmm. Your personal skills are often the ones that are going to make somebody determine whether they want to hire you, whether they have chemistry with you, there's a connection, and if you're not good at that at that point in time, let's say your social skills lead you to a meeting, mm -hmm. and then you blow the meeting, mm -hmm. you're not going to get mm -hmm. the gig. So, Would you say metaphorically that the, the social skills, social media skills, open a door, but it's your social skills, person to person, that actually get results? I think that your social media skills and your social skills can open doors depending on how you play them. Mm -hmm. um, Again, there's a weird thing to me, which is just my opinion, social media often has us more engaged but more disconnected all at the same time. Gotcha. You, you connect to people, but how you interact and what it turns yeah. into just sort of becomes digital numbers in the dark. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, the most of the people that we know mm -hmm. that sit in that chair mm -hmm. that are successful or within this chair they have another position, there's something that they're able to do when they sit down yeah, with yeah, you. And there's sure. something that makes them different, which is a personal quality. Um, sometimes social media is commoditizes you as a person. It makes everybody just a handle and how you connect and what language you use. But that doesn't tell you what's special about you or what. Mm -hmm. So just do both because um, you have to be prepared. You don't know where the opportunity is going to come from. Good, good answer. So um, here's a good one for you because we, we debate this all the time. Mm -hmm. This is from Stephen Carl on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He's actually asking two questions. I'm going to reverse them. Mm -hmm. um, the first part of the question is going to be his second part, which is how are you using technology today to gain your advantage? Before you answer that, then the first question is his concern is, is AI going to affect us in the future, kill off the opportunities, or do we still have a future? So first answer how you use technology today. Yeah, well, I use it in mixing. Um, there's certain things that technology does better than the analog domain. I, I think that DSing, com compression, limiting, those are incredible. I think that the emulations of analog equipment now allow me to have, like, if, like if in the old days I had one of something, now I can have a hundred of that something. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just wonderful. And then uh, you, you use the term, uh, flattening out the space, it gives us all access to to the listener, and I think that's probably the greatest advantage of uh, of the technology because all of the streaming services are using AI now to, to determine playlists and that sort of thing. So 
it's, 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 I think it's just a wonderful time for us to be in, so in, in this world. So then if you go to the first part of Stephen's question mm -hmm. and his fear about AI and machine learning, seems to me, I want to see what your opinion is, is you kind of don't have a choice. If you're yeah. buying product, if you're yeah. utilizing tools, yeah. whatever the case may be, that's going to creep into what you do. Yeah. And ultimately, if you embrace it, probably will make you stronger. 100%. Uh, I've been in the technology space for a long, long time, thanks to my father. And it would be really hard to jump in right now and learn what you need to learn. It's much easier to jump in at the beginning and, and learn as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not impossible to do it today, but I'd say embrace it early and, and, and try to find ways to enjoy it and use it. And, and, and a good attitude always helps and curiosity always helps. So Steven, you have a future, it will not kill you. Dave, what do you have for me? Okay, here, let's see. Uh, this, this question is from Zavanna, D-Z-V-N-N-A, on Instagram. He wants to know, um, how does one go about getting a mentor when you live in one country and the mentor's in another? Um, I, I think this is where um, social media skills help you. Um, as I said earlier, you can connect, uh, no pun intended, instantly sometimes, if you can make the case. Um, and then it's what you do after you connect. So obviously in order to take somebody's time, they have to be interested in what you're doing. There has to be some connective tissue. There has to be some reason to get together. Um, and so you have to learn how to make your case. That goes back sometimes to having the social skills, not just the social media skills. So. You certainly can connect to people now. I mean, sometimes we get guests by connecting on social media. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we find out things by connecting. But we won't know how the interview goes till we sit down and talk to them. We won't know what the chemistry is like till we... Um, I don't know that that's ever going to change. So put your best foot forward. Um, f make it an easy way for somebody to find out what you do. Um, be able to demonstrate access and personality and kinds of things when you make those connections. Choose carefully. You, you can get on the internet and be going down all kinds of paths and not know where you're going to go. So your obligation is also to, to scrutinize, to be careful, to be respectful and attract the right things to you. And I think that's probably the better way. If you can find your mentor near you, it's easier because then you can go to lunch. You have to be in another <laughs> country. All right, my turn. Sure. Um, from Shazar Z, this is from Instagram. Uh, Shazar Z says, what types of dithering do you use? There are very little posts about it. Is it truly necessary on mastery? So first explain what dithering is. Well, dithering is a way to mask um, noise in a track. It's, 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 to be completely candid with you, I don't have a clear picture of what dithering does. Uh, I've been working on trying to figure it out and I'm still lost. But essentially, it's a tool that you use to enhance what you already have. And um, mostly what I do is, is uh, uh, the plugins I put on my stereo bus, that's where I put dithering. And I rarely make changes, I rarely can hear the difference. But for me, dithering, and in, 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 feel free to flame me on this, I'll, I'll gladly accept it. Uh, dithering seems more of a mastering um, technique, and, and it's always better to leave the mastering things to the mastering guys. So. Nebulous answer for, for a reason. I, I'm, I'm not completely up to speed on dithering, sorry. Um, from uh, Moral Panikin, mm -hmm. uh, what are the five last things you do before turning an album or song over for mastering? Uh, well, number one, um, I check for distortion. I've got a, I've got a little bit of a, of a love of distortion and I might let a little bit too much through, so I have to police myself on that. Um, I, I, I compare it, I, I compare my mix to the real world. I'll use a, a plug-in like um, Metric AB uh, to compare it, but you can use anything you want. I want to make sure that, that I'm, I'm not just competing with what's out there, but that I'm hopefully better than what they're doing, which is hard. We've got a lot of great engineers. Um, I try to reassess my limiting, try to use as little as possible so the mastering engineer has something to do. Um, uh, um, a lot of times I, I like calling the mastering engineer and getting a relationship going with them and, and, and establish a connection so that 
I can give him the tools he needs, even if I have to reprint something. And lastly, and most importantly, I check in on a lot of different sources. I use a, a plugin called uh, Audrio, and it broadcasts directly from my stereo bus to my iPhone, and I can check all my mixes on iPhones. I can check it on my big, big speakers and on my little speakers because we, we're going to be listened to mostly on iPhones, so we can't, we can't disregard that. And so, so it's a great way to listen to, to you. Good. Your, your turn, sir. Okay. Um, this is from I Am Benjamin from Instagram. What's up, Benjamin? <laughs> he's got, a, he's got a, a question relating to uh, how do you make money off of, off of this particular profession. And so he wants to know specifically, um, should you navigate with or without a manager? What about invoicing? How do you go about doing that? Uh, collecting your money, um, just, just, just basically the process of making money through engineering. I've heard you answer this before, and you have, you have a great insight into that. Well, um, all right, so let me give it a shot. Uh, the first thing is honesty. You have to evaluate where you truly are, not where you hope you want to be, not where your mom tells you you are, <laughs> not where you have to evaluate one where you are, because you can't give a manager something when there's nothing to manage. They're not magicians, they're managers. So if you are starting to get calls, if you're working in a place where it becomes overwhelming and so on and so forth, then you, it's time to start thinking about a team. A team can be a number of different things. Some, you may need an assistant and not a manager. Somebody's a bookkeeper who can do your invoicing for you and get stuff out and all that kind of stuff. Invoicing becomes necessary in order for you to get paid, track records, taxes, the whole number. It's not that complicated, but it's something that somebody has to do. Um, Chong and I had lunch with a well-known Grammy-winning uh, engineer uh, last, who does a lot of stuff himself, and, um, and he's done quite well doing it. Um, so teams today can be different things. Do you need a team to help organize your business to move forward? Do you need a team to extend your brand or show you how to establish a brand? Do you need to build your web profile? There's different things, and you don't need them all at once. Sometimes you need them in different uh, components and capacities. Rates um, is a marketplace thing, depends. The rates are all over the mi all over the map. Um, not many people in our profession, just Herb's opinion, shoot me if you'd like. Well, don't, actually. Um, uh, the reality of it is, is that rates are being compressed in this business, and a lot of people don't want to face it. Um, budgets are not the same as they were from the record side. Um, for the certain upper one percentile, can be, and they get a lot of the business, and there are a lot of very well-known people who are actually scrambling for work, and it's not a comfortable thing, and that's partly technology, that's partly the change in the record business. But that said, the opportunities have expanded. So maybe you need to go mix for Netflix and do what they do, or maybe you need to go to a live digital place, like the place we're shooting, like Livehouse. There's different places to apply your craft in different ways that there weren't before. So expand the definition of that, and that's going to change your pay. We know some people who are went to coding school, who were engineers, audio engineers, and came out and became coding people and made a lot of money. So it's a long way of saying that we're in flux. Be aware of the marketplace. Be honest with yourself. Be honest about the marketplace. If you're not good at analysis, find somebody to help you be good at analysis, and then that will determine what team members you need and then what sequence you need them. Is that fair, Dave? I thought that was great. Okay. Um, here's one. I wonder where he got this question from, but I think I have a feeling I know well. This is from Anthony Anders on Twitter. If your studio was on fire and you could only take one piece of gear, what would you take with you? Where do you think you got that from? <laughs> you know, I thought about some smart-ass answers for this. No, and I'm not, not gonna, I'm not, yeah, I know. Uh, and, and I'm gonna give you a straight up answer. Mog EQ4M uh, is something that I'd probably grab. Um, so what you can't see on camera right now is Nico, his assistant, is crying and leaving the building because he thought he would say he would take <laughs> yeah. Nico. Well, I have to I have to admonish the the, the people that I ask that question a lot to because I I don't want to get an answer about microphones and computers and pets and spouses. 
I want a piece of gear, so I gave you a straight up piece of gear. Reward me for that. Thank me and thank me later. All right. Um, Love that good. piece of gear. What you got? Oh, um, um, this is from uh, Ali Vahid. Um, That's very he, good. He, he, he uses the term university, like um, the advantages and disadvantages of studying at a university. I don't know if he means that or the advantage and disadvantage of studying at an audio school like, like uh, Blackbird or something. Um, so what is your take on that? Um, it has a lot to do with the school's philosophy. So um, since the show has started, I've seen a bit of a shift in school's philosophies um, in terms of what they teach. There's a shift toward more compressed knowledge in a shorter amount of time. There's a shift toward practical hands-on experience and learning like real learning. So, for instance, the facility we're sitting here at Live House, this gives a chance for the MI students to get a whole different kind of experience from playing to mixing to miking to live front of house to broadcast. Um, which is stuff that we'll be able to utilize. Uh, the reason that we tout Blackbird so much is their holistic approach in a truncated amount of time, coupled with an amazing placement service. Um, they've created a brand standard that people want to hire a Blackbird student. And whether it's the live class or the studio class, it's pretty, and it's because you go in one room and you learn and you walk 50 feet over to six of the most incredible studios in the world with incredible artists in it and you work with them. So, and there's plenty of other schools that, that Berkeley is great for what it does. So, but they have different philosophies. So I think there is a ton of value. Hopefully I gave you some of the advantages and disadvantages. But the one thing that's consistent that we hear from pretty much everybody is that education is important. And I don't know that that education means I got a sheepskin and it's hanging on my wall as much as I learned and accelerated my ability to work with somebody, however way I got that education. Um, our good friend, Rance Dobson, they just opened up the 1500 Sound Academy. He's fond of saying, I want to give students cheat codes so that they learn right That's away. That's a great way to put it. And then they, they get to work, so they put them to work. So it's an exciting time. There's lots of good options, yeah. lots of good schools, and that's what I'd say it is. Okay, uh, another one for you. Uh, this is from um, at Day Pensado, world's third greatest mixer. Mm -hmm. um, knowing what you know now, if you were 20 years old today, mm -hmm. what career would you choose? Well, before I answer that, here's what's sad about you and I, <laughs> because I have a question that's from her, <laughs> And you beat me to it. <laughs> so ask me that again. Okay. Uh, this is from, from Dave Pinsider, world's third greatest mixer. Okay. Um, well, if you, if you had the knowledge that you have now and you were 20 years old now, what career would you choose? Uh, and this is from, from Dave Pinsado, world's third grade mixer? Third greatest oh, mixer. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. hear you right. Yeah. Um, ooh. Uh, if I had the knowledge I had now and I was 20. Yeah. Um, still be an entrepreneur because I think there's great opportunities on the entrepreneurial side. Um, be hard not to deal with something that was technology based mm -hmm. um, uh, because the upsides, the barriers can be really hard to get in, but the upsides are there and I just think that's part of the future. Mm -hmm. It would be entertainment of some sort oh, or maybe okay. s maybe sports you'd be um, incredible at sports maybe I, I have to see where the thing is but i think it in, it embodies a lot of it embodies a big entrepreneurial spirit um it embodies social media in a way it embodies technology mm -hmm. some of this some of the social media departments like for major league baseball and for nfl and nba are amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's got big entertainment components and mm -hmm. it. it's got a live event stuff Mm -hmm. um, people make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you can. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, probably there. It's hard to think about it because it just makes me go, damn, why didn't I do that years ago? <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. from Gina on Facebook, uh -huh. have you seen differences for women in audio since you've been around? 
Um, I have seen it get a little better. Um, I don't think it's gotten where, it, well, I know it hasn't gotten where it needs to be. There's a lot of problems, social problems in this world that I just don't have the intelligence to, to understand. Okay. Um, Do you think that's true? Um, my opinion would be this. Um, I've seen a ton of changes. Uh, most of them are positive. Um, if I were to start to list the women that, audio specifically, um, the big shift I see is generational. There was an older generation of women who were groundbreakers, Rose mm -hmm. Cherney, Paula Salvador, Leslie, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Candace Stewart, a whole bunch. Um, but there's tons in all kinds of areas. Publicity, Lisa Roy, planning, Karen Dunn. I mean, I could just go on and on after infinitum. Uh, that generation dealt with more of the schisms that existed. Uh, the newer generation, I think, embraces it now. I know we used to have a couple of people that I just mentioned on the show, and they, I wanted to ask them about this very question. They didn't want to talk about it. They were like, no, you know. So there was used to be this kind of ideas that I just need to be observed as a man and not make a difference. The newer generation embraces a difference. So whether it's Girls Make Beats or Women's Audio Mission or Gender Amplified, um, I can tell you from lawyers to songwriters to businesswomen to audio reps to, I mean, you can go agents, managers, engineers, studio people that run studios, Whitney at Record Plant and Candace at East West and all that. There's a ton of women and they're killing it. And they're not waiting for us to figure it out. And ultimately that's how change comes about. And um, I think it bodes very well. Um, I think that the expansiveness of them thinking outside the box leads to them reaching outside the box. And um, their input is being welcomed, and where it's not being welcomed, they're kicking down the doors. Good stuff. I think in the, and I agree with, I agree with you 100% well said, I think in the, in the, in the subspace of, of engineering, it, it's, it's still woefully lagging though. Um, do you have any strategies for mixing specifically from streaming servers? This is from Low Hertz. Oh, um, um, yes, yes. Com I mean, in fact, not only do I have an opinion, I think it's vital to, to do some of these things. I think the first thing you need to do is, is study the service. Like, like um, there's different rules for different platforms. Spotify has different than Tidal, has different than Apple. And, and, and get, become a, 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 um, an expert at LUFS. Uh, that's going to be the bar that, that, that you're going to have the most trouble with when you, when you, when you play stuff on, uh, on these streaming services. Um, they like a, a, a loudness unit of, of around 16. I try to sneak in 12, 13, 14 on them, and I'm, I have good luck with that. Uh, just, just, Immerse yourself in, in what you, they like, and, and then you can get on playlists, and then the playlist, as you move up, you get more playlists, and, and so you do your clients a great service. Um, for example, they don't like fades anymore, uh, the streaming services. It, it, do, it makes the playlist kind of kind of weird when you when you have a fade, so don't, don't use fades anymore. Uh, I've been told by several of the streaming services, get to the meat of the song within four bars. No 16 bar intros, no 32 bar intros, unless you're famous, unless you're one of the top five or 10, you can do whatever the heck you want. But a new, newly coming into the streaming services, get in as quick as you can. Uh, a lot of times you'll start the song with the, in, with the chorus and, and you, you, you might try that. that. You get points for that. Um, I mentioned earlier about Audrio. Um, uh, Post on, on a, post, just randomly post some of your own mixes on, on one of the streaming services that you like. Most of them you, you have access to yourself now. And, and see what it sounds like. See if, see if the, the, the robots got your low end and turned the home mix down. Understand LUFS because LUFS uh, doesn't relate to the entire frequency spectrum. Uh, use Audrio to check how you sound on those. So the main thing is study, learn, we, we, we know everything there is to know just about on how to make vinyl work. We know how to make digital recordings work. 
now put that same effort as a, as a profession into how to make the streaming services work. It's doable and you can get an advantage if you certainly do. If you know someone in the tech departments at these places, call them, ask them, ask them what can I do to get an advantage on your service. Um, I did that and I got some information. So that was a good answer. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm glad you feel strongly about that. that that's good. Um, <laughs> First one today, maybe. So, um, uh, oh, this is this one's from Lady Beats on Facebook, mm -hmm. and she wants to know something about the show. What happens? How do we res respond on the show when something doesn't go as we've planned or as we've broadcast, and the situation's changed? What? What happens to us? What, what do we do about it? You mean after the overdose wears off? Yeah. Uh, I, that, I mean, um, wow. Um, you said earlier, and you used the word honesty. Um, it seems like our MO, and, and a lot of times this mostly falls in your lap, uh, you, you have a, a penchant for, for honesty, and I think that's probably the, the foundation upon which we try to approach all problems. We're not infallible, we're not perfect. We, we make the effort, hopefully you can see that the effort is sincere and from the heart and pure, uh, but sometimes uh, you can't police everything and sometimes things beyond our control. So uh, we've got uh, the best team in audio, we've got the best team in, on the internet and uh, uh, they get us through a lot of stuff, you know. Um, what's your take on that? Um, yeah, it's not a straight line. So you just don't know what is going to turn. We've had shipping problems, sponsored idea changes, things that happen. Sometimes there's miscommunication. But it's going to happen when you have something that is as kind of with all the stuff we take on. Mm -hmm. So, we, yeah, I think honestly, I think we try to solve it. Um, the responsibilities in different areas fall to one or two team members, and they uh, oftentimes either shoulder it or will shoulder it together. Um, and sometimes you just mess up. We don't, mm -hmm. as a percentage of it, we don't often, but, but sometimes it happens. And I, I think to your point, we never said we were perfect and weren't going to be mm -hmm. perfect. And we have fought for a long time to keep the show for free when it's become a more increasing expensive endeavor for us. Um, but. I think if you're going to continue to grow, you're going to have those challenges come mm -hmm. up, and you mm -hmm. you deal with it. And it's um, and it can happen in any number of ways. It can happen in production. It can happen in information. It can happen mm -hmm. in sponsorships. It can happen in pricing. It can mm -hmm. happen in events being canceled in the mm -hmm. last minute. Mm -hmm. It can you know mm -hmm. you you oftentimes what we do just to wrap it up is we are codependent on other people doing their part. Mm -hmm. We can't control their part. Right. And so if their part doesn't come through it the same way as something we've agreed to right. do, there's not much we can do about it. So yeah. it happens. It's, also, a, it's um, a rolling production. This might, this, um, if this isn't right, just edit me out. But um, the show is free, but it's not free. It, it, it has a lot of costs. It has some extreme costs. And uh, we, we solve that problem with sponsors. We, we, we hand select the sponsors. We only use sponsors that we think can help you out, that have an integrity uh, about them. And um, I, think, I think you guys should make an effort to reward those sponsors and, and spend money with them because that's what keeps the show going. And uh, Herb has insisted uh, over many, many attempts to take the show and have, have, it, have, it, have you, you would need to pay for it. And uh, so to keep the show free, you're gonna, you're gonna get a couple of things that you might not like. But just remember, uh, we, we give it 100% effort, and in Herb's case, 150% effort. Every, everybody, you know, gives effort, no, yeah. not, not, so, not more Herb. Than so you. let's keep going. It's, 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 it's been great so far, and together we can take this thing to another level. Um, let's wrap it up. Um, you prepare for us to say goodbye. We did this show because we get a lot of comments and people enjoy the show. If you enjoyed the show, drop some comments and let us know. And uh, DP, take us home. I'm going to drop some comments. I enjoyed the show. Oh, good. Well, yes. there you go. Then yeah. just say goodbye. Uh, hey, guys, thanks for the questions. It means a lot. Um, it's always fun to interact with you guys. And uh, uh, 
I learned a little bit. I can sit and listen to Herb all day long. Um, and sometimes I do, by the way. Uh, so keep them questions coming. Maybe we can do this again, you know? This, uh, this was fun. All right. I really enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.